All right, so here we are again. It's a typical Monday morning. And so what we're gonna to do today is look at the chapter eight problem set. And um, hold on one second. <clears throat> It's it's a long one, so I because I know with the other class it took the whole period to uh, to get it done. So we'll start right away, and um, when we're done, though, you'll be experts in uh, in doing this stuff. So hold on one second. Um, Okay, one more thing. Um, perfect. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what's going on here? So we've got a little bit of everything in this chapter problem set. So here we have a box that we are expected to fill in with all the missing blanks. Um, so in other words, problems one through eight ask us to calculate uh, in the first two cases, simple interest, then time, then rate, and then principal. Now, the fact that it tells us that these are simple interest problems means that what we're actually doing here is we're using our formula I equals PRT and the very different variations of it. Uh, for example, we know that um, T equals I over PR, R equals I over PT, <clears throat> and finally P equals I over RT. So those of course were algebraically derived from the original equation, all right? So we're going to need all of these in these first eight problems. So let's take a look at the first one. So number one, we're told that the principal is $12,000, the rate is 6%, <clears throat> the time is two years. And so we're being asked to calculate P so we can just substitute in these numbers. We have, um, sorry, we has to calculate I. Um, I is simple interest. So I is PRT, as you know, from above here. And so we're gonna multiply 12,000 by um, R, which is 06, and then we have two years. And that product is $1,440. And so we can plug that into the box here. And that's our answer, $1,440. So in other words, if we start out with $12,000, invested it for two years at a 6% rate of interest, uh, the simple interest would end up being $1,440. <clears throat> now, number two is essentially the same thing as number one, except that it is um, slightly different numbers. So we have a principal of 25,000 a rate of eight and a half percent. And this is six months, or if you notice six months, remember is half a year. So we'll use uh, T equals 0.5 in our formula. So we'll multiply again, the same three, I equals PRT. We'll multiply um, 25,000 times R, which is 0.085 times half a year. And that works out to $1,062.50. <clears throat> All right, so let's put that in there. All right, so, so far they're very straightforward, very simple, very good. Now, the next two, numbers three and four, are asking us to solve for time. So for these, we'll need the formula T equals I over PR. All right, so in the first case, in number three, the principal is 1800. The rate of interest is 10%. The time frame, oh, that's what we're solving for. And then I is... 360. So now let's use that formula for T. T equals I over the product of uh, P times R, which is 1800 times 10%. So in your calculator, what you need to do is make sure that the expression in the denominator is completely contained within parentheses. Uh, the other option you can do, um, if you just want to simplify it, you can rewrite that as 360 over 180, 
because 10% of 1800 is in fact 180. So if you'd rather do it that way, that's fine. If you wanna solve it directly from here, then just make sure that in your denominator, you have parentheses surrounding 1800 times 10%. And so anyway, the bottom line is the final answer is two, two years is our answer. Very good. Now, the next one is also a time question. So in this case, number four, P is 600. The rate is 4%. And the simple interest is given to us as $72. So we'll have 600 over the product of... Um, Of, uh, let's see, it's T equals I over PR. So we'll have, oh, sorry, my fault. I put the wrong thing in here. It's 72 over, I knew something was wrong. Uh, T equals I over PR. So it's 72 over the product of 600 and 4%. That's better. Now, if you choose to simplify this, you'll discover that it simplifies very nicely because that denominator is just 24 and that leaves us with three years. Okay, so that one was pretty straightforward. All right. All right, I'll just give you a minute to catch up and then let me just type this in here. Three years. Oh, one more thing, I labeled this wrong. This is question four. <clears throat> All right, now we're good. All right, now for five and six, we're trying to solve for the rate. <clears throat> so um, what do we know in question five? The principal is 4,300. The rate is what we're looking for, but we do know that the time is six years and the simple interest is 1290. So remember with the uh, R formula, we have I over PT. So we'll have 1290 over the product of the uh, principal 4,300 times um, the time, which is six years. And again, if you wanna simplify this, the denominator 4,300 times six is 25,800. You don't have to do it this way. You can just do it directly right here, as long as you're careful with the parentheses. But when, either way, you should end up with 5%, okay? 0.05 or 5%. All right, so that was nice and easy. And then number six is exactly the same type of problem. Uh, let's see, hold on one second. Yeah, that's good. I wanna split the screen so you can see what we're doing. So number six, um, this is also a, time, a rate problem. So we're told that the principal is 200, the time is three years, and the interest is, simple interest is 45. So therefore, R equals I, which is 45, over the product of P times T, which you could rewrite as 45 over 600 if you want to. And that equals 0.075 or 7.5%. Very good, 7.5%. Now the last two ask us to solve for P, the principal. All right, so in those cases, we'll use the formula P equals I over RT. <clears throat> All right, so in this for, in number seven, R is 0.09, uh, P is four, 
and I is 354.60. All right, so the principal, remember, is I over PT or 354.60 over the product of, um, oh, sorry, it's I over RT, 9% times four, which is the same thing as 354.60 over 0.36. And let's see what that equals. 985. All right, so I'll fill that in here. <clears throat> All right, and then the last one is exactly the same. It's another rate problem. Um, um, not sorry, it's another principal problem. The rate is 15%. The time is seven years and the um, simple interest is 65,625. So therefore we have, once again, we have 65, this is I over PT, 65,625 is divided by the ratio of, um, sorry, RT, 0.15 times seven, which is 65,625 divided by so when you multiply seven by 0 0.15, you get 1.05. And that ratio is equal to $62,500, which we put in right here. Very nice. All right, so the box is done. So you can see now you might run into these uh, anywhere in, the, in, in, in here, but um, it'll show up again later in the later problems. Even the more advanced problems often will rely on us knowing the formula for simple interest. Okay, it's a very, very flexible formula. And, and you can see we've got a lot of mileage out of it already. All right. So let's see what's next. Number nine through 12, these are future values. Okay, so what formula are we looking at here? These are the future values of a sum when we're only looking at simple interest. Okay, hold on one second. So the formula that we actually should be using here is A equals P times one plus RT. That should get us the answer uh, the most quickly. So for number nine, we know that P is 800, R is 4%, T is five. So when you're filling in these numbers, The tricky part is right here in the parentheses. So you can do this with um, your calculator as long as you use the right number of parentheses. Right here, for example, <clears throat> you can see that you're going to need to use parentheses twice. If you'd rather avoid doing that, what you could do is simplify what's inside the parentheses and then just multiply it out and you'll get your right answer. So in other words, 4% times five is 0.20. When we add that to one, we get 1.2 then you can multiply that by 800 and you'll end up with 960. So it's up to you. You can do it any way you need to do. Whatever works, as long as you do it correctly, you'll get the right answer. Okay. Okay, number 10. Here we have P equals 15,000, <clears> R is 9%, and T is seven years. Okay, so again, we're trying to figure out the future value based on simple interest only. So A equals 15,000, and then in parentheses, we have one plus the product of 0 0.09 times seven. 
and that's really the same thing as one point um, one plus point sixty forty. Okay, so if you multiply fifteen thousand by one point sixty three, you'll get twenty four thousand four fifty. Okay. Very nice. All right, eleven p equals seven hundred. Um, R equals ten. <clears throat> and t equals six. Okay, so this is this equivalent of seven hundred times one plus point six, or seven hundred times one point six, and that's going to equal one thousand one hundred and twenty. Okay, and then finally, there's one more. P is 1250. Uh, R is eight and a half percent, and T is six months, which is of course the same as 0.5 years. Don't forget about that. So therefore, we'll have 1250 times one plus the product of 8.5 percent times 0.5, or 1250 times one plus 0.0425. Or 1250 times 1. 4, uh Yes, O oh, four. Sorry, O oh, four two five, and that equals thirteen oh three. Now this one you can round it. It's thirteen oh three point one two five, but because this is dollars and cents, you can say that this is rounded to. 1303.13. All right, now we've got a small number of word problems here. They're based on what we've just been doing. And you can tell because these all mention the idea that there is simple interest being calculated or given to us. So here, if you notice, it says here that in addition to working, and her family's contributions, Jane had to borrow another $8,000 over the course of six years to complete her education. The simple interest that she pays is $4,046.40. What is the rate of interest? Because they're telling us the simple interest and they're asking us for the rate of interest, that means that they're asking us for this formula right here. Okay, so therefore, we have the simple interest. Oh, let's write these down um, as well. I equals 4046.40. Uh, P is 8,000 and T is six. All right, so now we can solve for R by noting that this is 4046.40 40 over 8,000 times six or 4046 times, oh, divided by 48,000. And when all the dust settles, that works out to be 0 0.0843, which is All right, now the next one is also a similar type of problem. In fact, it's the same thing because we're given the simple interest and we're being asked to calculate the interest rate. So it's absolutely identical except for the numbers. All right, so I'm gonna copy this down and then we can get started on it. All right, so this time though, the interest, simple interest is 18,000. The principal is 15,000 and the time is 12 years. Okay, so remember T is always in years. 
So therefore, R equals the ratio of 18,000 over the product of 15,000 times 12, which is 18,000 over 180,000, which is 0 0.10 or 10%. All right, well, if only they were all like this, we'd be in good shape. No, it's not gonna last much longer. No, we've got trouble ahead. Okay, now how about this one? So again, these are all very similar. They're all simple interest problems. This time we're look, being asked to solve for the principal. So that means we're grabbing this formula, P equals I over RT. And we also are being told that the simple interest is 1350, uh, th sorry, 1350. R is 9%, it's a three-year investment. So therefore we have 1350 over the product of 09 times three, which is 1350 over 0.27. Um, all right, and so that ratio is exactly $5,000. All right. Okay, so what's coming next? Now, this is also a simple interest problem, but this time it says they want to find the term of the loan. Don't forget the word term is the same thing as time in this context. So this is the case where we're solving for T. All right, so let me go grab the T formula. And we'll do it. By the way, if you weren't sure, let's say you forgot the term means time, you, you would know it because that's the only variable that's missing in the problem. In other words, they give you I, P, and R. Therefore, they must be asking for time. All right, anyway, so the simple interest is 1282.50. P, the principal of borrowed is 4,500. The rate of interest, nine and a half percent. So T equals 1282.50 over the product of 4,500 and 9.5%. Now, in this case, that product of 4,500 times 0 0.095 is 2750. And so that ratio is three. Well, after all that, it's exactly three years. Well, that worked out rather well. All right, now for this one, it's the same, it says term. Yeah, this is the exact same type of problem. So let's copy this and just change it a little. Um, in this case though, the interest is 441.15. The principal that they borrowed is 86.50. And the rate of interest is 6.8%. So when we plug in all these numbers, we get 441.15 over the product of 86.50 times 0.068 or 441.15 over, okay, 86.50 times 0.068, 588.20. Okay, and that ratio Hmm. Mm -hmm. Point 0.75, point 0.75 years, which is the same thing, of course, as nine months. Okay. 
All right, so those are done. Now, now we're moving into a much more serious set of questions. These each require multiple parts to calculate them. So, yeah, these are these will take a while. Because what we're being asked to do is not only calculate the future value of a sum with compound free uh, compound interest, but we have to actually figure out what the compound interest is. And that requires multiple steps. All right, so be prepared to do a lot of work here. All right, so what do we have to do here? All right, well, first things first, let's take a look. These are the numbers that we're given. And these require that formula that we saw not too long ago, which tells us the future value of the sum when we have compound interest. All right, so I'm gonna type it in there and as soon as you see it, you should recognize it. Okay, it's A equals P times parentheses one plus R over N to the NT power. Okay, that is your formula for calculating the future value of the sum when <clears throat> we have compound interest. So all of these cases and all of these problems, we're going to need this as a starting point. <clears throat> now, of course, this is more complicated, so the complexity gets even more advanced. So let's start with the first one. The principal is 825, the rate is 4%. The compounding frequency is annually, which means once a year, and T is 10. So our first piece of business is to plug those numbers into this formula. So we'll have um, 825 and we have a 4% rate of interest with annual compounding over a period of 10 years. So what we should probably do is simplify this a little it's 825. Now, the parentheses, inside the parentheses, we have 1.04 raised to the 10th power. Okay, so um, what you should probably do, what you can do is multiply, do the 1.04 to the 10th first, and then multiply that by 825. So if you do it that way, what you're actually multiplying is the uh, 1.04 to the 10th is actually 1.480244, uh, after rounding it a little bit. Although you don't probably need that much accuracy because we're gonna round it to dollars and cents anyway. But this should work out to 1221.20 approximately. Again, when rounding it to dollars and cents. Oh, it's way too big, isn't it? Oh, that's fine. You can read that. All right. Now, we're not done, though, unfortunately, because it's asking us to also figure out the compound interest. So what we have to do is note the following. Total interest equals... Uh, actually, no, sorry. Um, oh, no, we'll start with that. Total interest equals simple interest plus compound interest, which means that compound interest must equal total interest minus the simple interest. All right. Now, the total interest is easy. The total interest equals the future value minus the principal. Uh, and by the way, future value is just A, principal is, is P. Okay, so let's do it here. Now, of course, simple interest, we don't have to worry about it because simple interest is just um, I equals PRT. So here's what we're gonna do. We'll start out by calculating the compound interest, um, or actually, no, let's do it this way. 
Oh, you know, I just realized too, we, we could have done this in a slightly simpler way. Um, I'll tell you what, let's do it this way. Let's say the total interest equals future value minus principal. Oh, I do have it down there. Oh, sorry. Um, so I'll tell you what, let's do this. Um, let's do this first. Once you know the total interest, you can rearrange that algebraically. Um, you can solve for the simple interest and then simply subtract that from the total interest. So for example, here, uh, the total interest is the A, which is 1221.20 minus the original principal, which is 825. And so the difference between the two 1221.20 is $396.20. The simple interest is, as you know, PRT, which means the principal of 825 times the rate of four times 10 years. And so that works out to be $330. So therefore the compound interest equals the difference between these two numbers, which works out to be um, 66.20. So each time we do this, you should calculate the future value and then go through these steps. Okay, so you know that 1221 is your future value that gives us the total interest when we subtract the principal. Then we can calculate separately the simple interest and then the difference between those two is what we're really looking for, which is the compound interest. So these are just little reminders up here. This is what you're actually doing. All right, so yeah, as I said, this is gonna be a lot of work, but by the time we're done, you'll be experts in calculating these numbers. That's one good thing to look forward to. All right. So while you're doing that, I'll start typing in the numbers for 19. P equals 3250. Um, rate is two. Annual the compounding is once a year or annually. And finally, this is a five-year investment. All right. So we'll just use the same formula, this guy right here. And we'll plug in our numbers. All right, here we go. 3250 is the principal. <clears throat> the rate is two. Compounding frequency is one. And this is a five year investment. Okay, now after simplifying, this is actually 1.02 to the fifth power. Okay. So anyway, whether you multiply, whether you do the 1.02 to the fifth first or the 3250, the product of these two numbers is approximately equal to 3588.26. Okay, now once we have that information, look what we can do. We'll use this procedure. Of course, the numbers are all wrong, but the process is the same each time. Total interest would be 
588.26 minus the original principal of 3250, which is 338.26. Uh, let me just double check that. 3588.26 minus 3250. Yes. Okay. Now the simple interest, of course, is PRT, which is 3250 times 2%, and T is five years. All right. And so that's going to give us $325. And now finally, the compound interest is the difference between the two, which is um, $13.26. Okay, so that one's done. All right, so give me a minute to catch up. And then in the meantime, I'll start writing in the numbers for problem 20. We have P equals 75. Wow, that's a small investment. We have a 3% rate of interest. Um, some annual compounding, and then finally, six years. All right, so we'll use our favorite formula for this. Okay, so we've got 75, it's one plus 0.03 over two raised to the two times six power, which is 75 times 1.015 to the 12th power. And then when you multiply that out, That should be approximately 89,671. Oh, sorry, no, it's not. It's 89.67. I was reading the wrong thing. $89.67. Remember, we started out with just Now the rest will fall right into place. We'll have 8967 minus 75. So we have 1467 worth of total interest. The simple interest um, principal times the rate times the time. And that equals 1350. So therefore the compound interest is the difference which is a dollar 17. Okay, so it's a small amount because of course we started out with only $75. Okay. Very good. All right. So while you're catching up, I'll write in the answer, the uh, details for 21. The principal is 1550. Um, the rate is 5%. And it's semi annual compounding. And it is a seven year investment. All right. Okay, so I'm going to uh, grab our formula.
And let's plug in some numbers. Okay, so we plug in the numbers. And when we simplify, we've actually got 1.025 raised to the 14th power. And if you take out your calculator again and you multiply these together, 1.025 raised to the 14th times 1550 works out to 2190.11, approximately. That's rounded to dollars and cents. Now we need to do the rest to get to our compound interest. So here the total interest is 21, first we have 2190 minus the principal of 1550. And the difference between those two, 640.11. Now the simple interest is of course PRT, um, which is 1550 times R times T. And that turns out to be um, 542.50. So the difference between the two is um, Okay, so we're getting pretty good at this, aren't we? So for 22, we have P equals 625, R is 8%, N is 4, T is 12. All right, let's go grab the formula, our favorite formula. And let's substitute some numbers. Six twenty, whoops, six twenty five is P, R is point oh eight. And it's a quarterly compounding situation, and the time frame is 12 years. So you've actually got 625 multiplied by 1.02 to the 48th power. And so if you multiply that out, you should get approximately 16, 619, uh, 616 rather, 0.92. Very good. And then of course we need to follow that up uh, and calculate the compound interest. So here, total interest is the difference between the principal and the future value. 16, 16, 0.92 minus 625. Nine ninety one ninety two, and then here we'll take um, the total interest. Oh wait, sorry. First we have to calculate the simple interest, which is six twenty five times point oh eight times twelve. Okay, so that's eight percent per year for twelve years. 600 exactly, 
which is kind of nice. And then that means that our compound interest must be 991.92 minus 600, which is 391.92. Excellent. All right, well, there's just one more of these, but then what comes after is even a little bit more messy, but that's okay, we can do it. All right, so let me type in the numbers for 23. And here we have, he is 2575, R is 0.04, N is four, and T is two. All right, let's grab the formula. All right, there we go. Okay, let's plug in some numbers. Twenty five seventy five times one plus point oh four over four, and then we raise that to the four times two power. So that's twenty five seventy five times one point oh one the eighth power and when you multiply those out twenty seven eighty eight point thirty five or six depending on how you actually this should be six um, we're rounding to dollars and cents Beautiful. And then finally, we still have to go through this process. All right, so the total interest would be 2788.36 minus 2575. And that one is 213.36. The simple interest, 2575 times the rate of interest of 4% for two years is um, $206. So the difference between those two is our compound interest, which is of course, uh, 13.36 minus 206 is $7.36. All right then. All right, now the next block of questions all involve annuities. Yes, the dreaded annuities. Now, in these cases, you only have to calculate the future value, which is nice. But the formula, as you recall, is very, very complicated. Okay, so let me type that in there for you, just to remind you what this thing looks like. A equals, now don't forget too, here we're replacing P with R. This capital R refers to the repeated payments as opposed to a single payment, which is known as principal. So we have one plus R times, a capital R is our repeated payment. In the parentheses, we have one over, or one plus R over N to the NT power minus one, all divided by
R over N. Okay, so that is what we need for each of these cases. And again, all we're calculating is the future value, but still we have to be very, very careful with it. All right, so 24, what do we know? R is 200, so where it says payment here, this is R. Then we have the rate of interest is 9%. The frequency of compounding is once a year. And then finally, T is nine. Ooh, so these are pretty scary. So let's plug in some numbers and let's see how much we can simplify it. All right, so again, the capital R is 200. All right, so here we have 0 0.09, but oh, 09 divided by one. And the number of years is nine. All right, so how can we simplify this? All right, well, in the numerator, we have 200 times 1.09 1 raised to the ninth power minus one, all divided by 0 0.09. All right, so what you should probably do is first calculate 1.09 to the ninth minus one to get uh, to simplify that a little bit. And so that works out to be approximately 1.9 eight, nine, three, two, seven, five. You probably don't need all those decimals, but um, because we're rounding to dollars and cents, but I'm just gonna leave them there for now. 1.17189327, sorry, this is a nine. And you know, you may have even more decimals than that on your calculator. I would say realistically four or five is probably enough, but all right, well, let's just carry on from here. And so when you multiply those two values in the numerator and divide by the 0.09, you're going to get rounded to dollars and cents, 2604.21. Okay. All right, so that's that and we're done. We don't have to do any compound interest just the future value, which is kind of a relief. Okay, now 25, same thing, but this time R is 750, capital R that is, lowercase r, the interest rate is three, annual compounding again, and this time it's 12 years. <coughs> so why don't I grab our formula and then plug in some numbers. All right, so we have 750 for R. Uh, capital R that is 0.03 here. N is one because it's annual compounding. And then here we have one and 12. Okay. All right, now when we simplify this, we get so we'll have in parentheses of 
1.03 raised to the 12th power minus 1 over 0.03. Okay, now if you calculate 1.03 to the 12th minus 1 separately, you'll have approximately 0 0.425760887, let's say. And then we can divide that by 0 0.03. And the final result, which is again rounded to dollars and cents, is going to be 10,644.02. Okay. All right, so that worked out well. How about 26? Our, in the case of 26, we're told that the uh, payment is 1250 the interest rate is 6.8%, semi-annual compounding, and T equals three. Very good, now let's grab the formula and make some substitutions. So R is 1250, that's our payment. Okay, the rate is 6.8. The number of, oh, the compounding frequency is two this time. And this is a three-year investment. Okay, down here we will also have 0 0.068 over two. Twelve fifty, and in the brackets we have one point oh three four raised to the sixth power. Minus one over point oh three four. All right, so if you want to figure out one point oh three four to the sixth minus one first, let's see, you have. 1.034 to the sixth minus one. So that's going to be about 2221463399, let's say. And then down here we've got 0.034. So after you do all the calculations, you'll have 8167.0. 15. All right. <laughs> Well, there's two more. All right. So for 27, R is 375. Capital R, lowercase r, is 0.05 or 5%. Now we're looking at quarterly compounding. And uh, it's a four year investment. All right. Very good. So let me go grab the formula. Which you probably have memorized by now.
So um, 375. 0.055% for uh, uh, times a year of compounding. And we have four years in the total investment. So 375, and then we have uh, one point, now 5% divided by four is 1.2.5%, so it's 0.125 raised to the 16th power, oops, not 12, 16, minus one, all divided by 0 0.0125. So if we simplify what's in the brackets, uh, let's see. That's point two one nine eight eight nine five four eight. Okay. So our final answer will be about sixty eight seven one point fifty five. All right. Now for 28, um, we have a, prince, a payment of 1530. A rate of 0.045 for 4.5% uh, quarterly compounding. And finally, we have T equals eight years. All right. So once more, we will go back and grab our formula. Okay, so let's plug them in. All right. So what do we know? The principal or the payment rather is 1530. The rate is four and a half, uh, half percent. The compounding frequency is four. T is eight. Okay, so to simplify, this one is gonna be a little bit trickier to simplify, but we'll have 1530. Okay, and then we actually have in the parentheses 1.01125 raised to the 32nd power minus one all over point oh one one two five okay so now we can simplify this a little and that turns out to be zero point Four three oh four five one four oh two All right, so when you figure all that out, let's see what we get. That should be roughly fifty eight thousand five forty one thirty nine.
Okay, so those are done. That's good because those were the hardest ones, I think. Now we've got some fairly straightforward ones. We're going to be calculating EAR. Now, let me just remind you what that formula looks like. So the EAR formula looks like this. E equals, let me just type it in there. Parentheses one plus R over N, sorry, lowercase R N. And then we have the nth power minus one. Okay, and just a quick reminder, E equals the EAR, R, lowercase R is APR. N is, of course, the compounding frequency. That's all we need to calculate these. All right, so let me just move these down here, make them a little bigger so you can see them. All right, and now let's just do these. Now for 29, we're told that the rate or the APR is 6%. We have quarterly compounding. So we'll use this formula. And we'll have 6% <clears throat> here, four, four times a year. And so you've got 1.015 to the fourth power minus one, which works out to be about um, 06136 or 6.136%. 6 you can round that to 6.14 if you want to. So these are nice and easy. Yes, this is a nice welcome relief from what we've just been doing. <clears throat> now 30, the rate is 10%. And we have semi-annual compounding. Okay, so let's figure this one out. So again, just replace the R with 10, 10%. And because it's semi-annual compounding and it's two, so what you've actually got here is 1.05 squared minus one. Oh, wait a minute. Um, minus one. And that works out to be 0.1025 or 10.25%. Beautiful. All right. There's a couple more. 31 gives us 6.5%. Uh, and quarterly compounding. All right. Nice. Beautiful, all right, so we've got, six and a half percent. Here we have quarterly compounding, so there's a four here. And so when you simplify this one, 6.5% divided by four is 0 0.01625 raised to the fourth Hold on. How the hell does it keep doing that? All right, so it's point oh, okay. It's oh six six six, which of course equals six point sixty six percent. Not, oh, what happened there? Okay.
All right, and there's just one more in 32, um, R is 0 0.09, lowercase r is 0 0.0955. And we have quarterly comp, no, we have semi-annual compounding. All right, so let's plug in those numbers. So uh, here we have 0955, and down here we have a two. And so you've got um, 1.04775 squared minus one, and that equals Um, 9.09, uh, oh, wait a minute, 09778, which you could, um, which is 9.778, or you could round it to 9.78%. All right, well, those are done. So that just leaves a few um, word problems. And it turns out these word problems are based on uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. I'll just leave this here so you can keep copying it. What, uh, what we need here is the future value formula. There we go. Okay, so that's what we're gonna need for the next batch of problems. I'll just sneak it in right here so you can see or actually I shouldn't say that some of these require the, the annuity formula. So uh, all right, let me go get that one as well. So we don't have to keep looking for it. Uh, where are we? There it is. All right. So this way they're right there where we can find them. So for this first case, a couple decides to set aside $5,000 in a savings account for a second honeymoon trip. Now, they're only putting the money aside once. This is not an annuity. That's a key detail. That means it's the principal. It's compounded quarterly, N equals four for 10 years, T equals 10, and the rate is nine. What do they have in 10 years in their bank account? Well, that means we're using the future value formula on the left, the one that is meant for sums rather than annuities. All right, so let's plug in some numbers. Now this time we don't have to break it up into simple and compound interest. We just want the future value, that's it. That's kind of nice. So we have 5,000 and then we have 0.09. Um, the fre frequency is four. And it is a 10 year investment. So we've got 5,000 multiplied by 1.0225 raised to the 40th power. Okay. And when you do that, you should get 10, 12,000. 175.94. Yes, that's right. And you're done. All right, now for this next one, in order to pay for college, the parents of a child invest $20,000 in a bond. Okay, they only invest the money once. That's a principal of 20,000 not a repeated payment, it's not an annuity. And in addition to that, we know that this rate of interest is 8%. Compounding frequency is two twice a year for semi-annually. And they're looking for the future value in 18 years. All right, so we'll steal this formula, the future value of a sum, plug away.
All right, so 20,000. And then here we'll have one plus R, 0.08 over two. So that reduces to 20,000 times 1.04 to the, whoops, 1.04 to the 36th power. And when you multiply that out, you should get um, 82,078.65. All right, very good. Now let's take a quick peek at 35. A husband and wife plan to save money for their daughter's college education in four years. They decide to purchase an annuity. Now that's the, your hint right there with a semi-annual payment earning 7.5% compounded semi-annually. Find the future value of the annuity in four years when the semi-annual payment is 2250, okay. So that means we're using this formula right here. All right, so now we switch over to the annuity formula. And what information do we know? Capital R is 2250, the semi-annual payment. Lowercase r is the 7.5% interest. Um, it's a four-year investment. And um, we also, oh, N, it's semi-annual compounding. Very good. We'll plug away. All right, 2250. And we have four, wait a minute, two, it's semi annual. Okay. And then, so here we'll have two times four. Down here we have all right, now that's a lot to simplify. But we can do it. So you'll have in the numerator, 2250. In the brackets, we have 1.0375 to the eighth power minus one, all divided by 0.0375. Now, if you simplify what's in the brackets, which is probably what you should do, you'll have about 34, 24, seven, oh, and again, this is probably way too many digits, but um, that's what it actually is. And so the final result here is 20,548.25. Okay. Beautiful, and there's one more, and then we're done. Okay, that's a little tight. Very good. Okay, one more, and then we're done. So. Here, a business owner decided to purchase an annuity. There it is. So we already know it's an annuity, but um, the payment is 600. And it happens every quarter. So N is four, quarterly compounding. Um, it's a three-year in investment. And the rate of interest is 8%, there you go. So we have everything we need. Let's go grab the formula, do some substitutions. 
Okay, but before I do that, I just remember one little thing I have to do. Okay, so let's do it. All right, so what do we know? Um, R is 600. Oh, I almost forgot the ratio. 600 times in the brackets. Um, oh, no, sorry, I, I skipped ahead a little. I was, didn't make the substitutions that I know. Sorry, here it is 600. And then here we have the rate is eight. That would help if I knew what I was looking at here. Four for N. Four times three is the exponent. Down here, I also have 0 0.08 over four. And so it's 600 times 1.02 to the 12th power. over 0 0.02. Okay. And then 1.02 to the 12th minus one reduces to 0.26, all divided by 0 0.02. And that ends up being $8,047.25. Okay, that was the last one. And so, now we're done. I mean, we're not going to do anything else today, obviously at this hour, but so uh, what we'll do is when we come back on Thursday, we'll get back into chapter 11, which we kind of just started. But um, at some point, you know, we'll, we'll just keep going for a while, but then at some point we'll have a second midterm, but not for a while just yet. So for now, um, what you should do is just make sure you've got all the right answers and then just maybe look through your chapter 11 notes and then we'll pick it up from there on uh, Thursday. All right. So I'll see you all on Thursday. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Right, see you later. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay.